Hey, it's Clay. Welcome to another video. This is going to be part three in my Hammond AO29 conversion to a guitar amp. Um, what I want to talk about today is schematics and kind of the circuit that I am aiming to build towards. So um, this type of a project I have done one before and I've got a thread here on uh, TDPRI and I turned it into a 6v6 plexi. It actually has six L6s, which is kind of a long story. But um, this time I want to go for more of a Fender style amp. And uh, I actually have a Fender style amp already that I built from a Mojo Tone kit from scratch. And um, it's, it kind of turned into a deluxe or super reverb. I've got some videos on my channel if you want to check it out. Um, I really, really love the tone and feel of that amp. So I want to recreate that. A little bit with this and see if, if anything else it, it's not so much to recreate but just to kind of experiment with that circuit a little bit more to familiarize myself you know got different transformers and just different a whole different setup here really and just want to see if I can identify what I love about that Fender blackface sound so um, I guess I want to kind of look at through some different circuits and schematics and talk about what I'm thinking about and what I'm moving towards and kind of go from there. So um, first and foremost, I want to talk about my previous amp. Now these are voltages that are taken from the amp in its most current state. Now with this amp I had a weird, some weird stuff going on with voltages where when I would have, I initially built the amp with 6v6s, but my voltages were much higher than this. Um, much like a hundred volts higher and I wonder if I could even find a part of this thread where I laid that out but my voltages were very very high at that time and so I, and then I just tried a number of different things including trying serial so you can see here um, you know my B plus is running at like 519 at your first node of B plus which would be typically you know so we've got like 513 going to the plates of the power tubes which is a lot of voltage now um, if I look at something like a super reverb you can see there's 460 volts on the plates of 6L6 GC's so I was thinking well we're kinda more in that ballpark so I put 6L6's in and what do you know for some reason that brought my voltages down so I don't know if if the difference is because the stock Hammond AO29 amp has a lot more tubes and so there's a lot more current being drawn and then that you know having a lot more tubes drawing more current brings down the voltage I I'm not really quite sure and if you have any insight I'd really appreciate it but nonetheless what my plan is to do with this amp is to for sure build the blackface AB763 style preamp. Now I'm only going to do a single input, single channel, at least to begin with. And what I kind of want to do is pick and choose my favorite parts of this amp and just focus on the tone. Now, um, so I'm probably going to be eliminating the normal channel. I'm going to be elim eliminating the reverb and the tremolo. Now one thing I will say though is that the, the um, tube driven analog spring reverb is fantastic sounding and in my opinion one of the most essential parts of that blackface sound but um, I'm you know I at the same time it also is just a little bit more of a complex circuit it requires an extra transformer it requires you know three triodes um, it requires a reverb tank and on the on the flip side, I almost always play with pedals, and so and actually when I play in a live environment, I don't really like to use reverb anyway. So all that to say, I want to strip that away, and then um, basically I'm going to be prepared to either go with more of this 6v6 based deluxe reverb style power section if the voltages are more like this, or also prepared to do the 6L6s. You know, the, really the differences here are pretty minuscule. Um, so, kind of prepared to do either way. So, um, let's talk a little bit about what that looks like. Um, this is actually, um, actually this isn't what I want. I want the AB763. Um... Um... 
So the, the closest thing to the amp that I am looking at is the um, AB763 Fender Bandmaster, Re, uh, Bandmaster Reverb, basically. Um, oh, not, not the reverb. Probably just the Bandmaster AB763. Here we go. This is exactly what I want right here. So a Blackface Bandmaster. This is probably going to be closest to what I want to do. Um, so let's talk a little bit about it. You know, from the input, I'm going to choose the vibrato channel. Um, got our one meg here setting our input impedance. We have uh, in parallel 68k times 2 is 33k grid stopper. We've got a 1.5k 25 UF bypass 100k on the plate. Everything's very standard here. Blackface fender tone circuit. Not going to do the bright switch. Um, again, a pretty typical tone stack here, or a, or a triode setup here. Pretty typical fender triode setup. Um, into a long tail pair phase inverter into a pair of 6L6s with solid state rectification. Um, that's kind of going to be the overall game plan for this amp. Now, in doing my research, however, if you look, there's one big difference between this amp and like the Super Reverb, for example, which has always been kind of my favorite amp, and it's right here. The ha this half of a 7025. So if you follow the vibrato channel, same thing, 1 meg, 33k, same exact, you know, 100k, the, the bypass here, 1.5k bias is all the same, blackface tone stack, same, gonna, you know, everything exactly the same. But then it runs here, we got a 0.02 coupling cap, then we run into this 3.3 meg resistor in line with a 10 picofarad capacitor. And what this does, it actually splits the signal and you have part of the signal being sent away down the reverb track and the reverb itself actually has this being driven there's this tube here that drives the reverb and um, so you have basically this r resistor and capacitor try to help mix the reverb back in with the dry signal uh, but also to to keep it you know phase aligned and also at an appropriate gain level with the with the capacitor serving to kind of keep it from being coming dull, allowing the high frequencies to pass by. And then we have a third triode stage. So we actually have three gain stages in line here with this kind of interesting mixing thing too. Now, um, in, if you read a lot of the discussion on the forum comparing the reverb amps with the non-reverb amps, um, this is really the core distinction is this third triode stage. Compare the bandmaster, we've got one, two long tail phase, two a, you know, um, push-pull power tubes, super reverb. Now the normal channel, one, two, and then it actually goes right here over top to this, to the long tail fair, pair, but not a lot of people play in the normal channel. Everybody loves the vibrato channel because it's got this third gain stage. And, and the way I interpret it is, you know, a, so this amp, the non-reverb, it's got higher clean headroom, it has a less hot preamp, it doesn't break up till maybe 7 on the volume control, um, and the amount of clipping and compression is not as tremendous. Now with this reverb channel, with the third triode, it actually starts to break up at maybe 4 on the volume control, and it starts to get a little bit hotter and it works a little bit harder. And by my estimation, um, that is a core part of the sound that I really like. Um, but what's peculiar in, and what is difficult to replicate is the fact that the reverb will split the signal off, the tremolo will have some effect on the signal, both of them, as well as this 3.3 meg mixing resistor, will have some attenuation of the signal. And so if you're going to remove the reverb and the tremolo, the question is how do I make that gain back or how do I make up that loss, but I, do I still add the third triode stage? And if I add, if you look at just this amp, you actually have a really convenient tube setup where you've got one 12x7 here, another 12x7 here, and then your two power tubes. You know, it's very simple. Whereas if I add a triode, you know, that leaves an, another triode unused and so how do I want to handle that? 
kind of opens up a lot of questions. So I think what I'm going to do is, um, and then actually the last thing I want to mention is that the amp itself, I believe this is the picture I want. Yeah, so this is a picture of the layout of the AB763 that I found. And if you actually look at the tube layout, um, this V3 and V4 right here are actually our 9-pin tubes. And I think we also have a 9-pin tube here at V1, but these two right here, are this is a 12AX7 and this is a 12AT7, so these are a natural fit. You know, it's almost exactly like this setup right here. So, yeah. Uh, basically, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to start by making a very simple one input, no tremolo, basically bandmaster AB763 amp. Just the vibrato channel, no normal channel, no reverb or no tremolo, just this path right here. And focusing, you know, V4 is going to become V1, V3 is going to be our phase inverter, 5 and 6 are going to be power tubes and then on V11 I'm actually going to just use that as terminal strips to use solid state rectification. Um, so that's going to be the game plan at least to start. Then I'm going to try to voice the amp from there and see how I like it. If I end up feeling like I'm really missing something I can always come back and I, I've got this V9 tube over here with a whole lot of room to potentially add this third triode and what I've kind of been thinking of is this schematic right here so um, what I've done is we've got our typical Fender input everything is basically the same on the super reverb or the bandmaster reverb until right here you get to this 0.02 mixing resistor then what I chose to actually do is to insert a 1 meg master volume control and my thought is that with some attenuation maybe, I don't know, half or a third, three quarters on the volume, master volume here, it'll be similar in terms of gain as if you had the signal pull from the reverb, the tremolo, as well as this mixing resistor. So I'm going to see if this master volume here can give us kind of a quote-unquote similar level of gain in sound and feel as the blackface with the reverb. And then we run into the third triode stage, all typical Fender, 100K on the plate, 1.5 with a, and I, I, I use a 5 UF cap. It really would be 22 or 25. The, the fact is with it, your bypass cap from 5 to 300, it doesn't really matter. You're all, there's, there, so a 5 UF is, is just fine. Uh, it doesn't, it could be 25. What, whatever I've got on hand is probably what I'll use. So that's not a huge deal, but and then from there we run into our typical Fender back end. Um, but then I've got this extra triode. And what I think I want to do is play around with this stage here and this stage here. And if any, I could potentially try a cascade mod. And what that would do is it would take the input and instead of sending it to this triode, it would actually route it down here to the cascade. Or maybe I could make it a separate input entirely. And um, run into this triode, I can voice it a little bit differently. You know, I've got a 2.7K bias resistor and a maybe a 1 or a 0.68 or 0.068 bypass cap to shave off some low end. We've got a 220K bias resistor. This is mostly taken from a Marshall 0.02 um, coupling cap into a resistor and a gain control and then run this into here into this insert point on the grid of V1A so it's almost kind of like a JCM 800 type of input control there and then also the other thing I want to experiment with is over here at V2B and what I got some influence from was this Trainwreck Express circuit and basically, what I see here is, right, so if we, we've got this right here, we've got a triode stage, we've got a tone stack, 
got another tryout stage, and then we run into this in kind of weird setup right here. This is, you know, two capacitors in parallel. You know, that's kind of an interesting choice. And a 150K resistor to ground. That's kind of similar to this. Running into that third stage, if I kind of keep the master up, I wonder, and then the other thing is to, to maybe put this bias resistor, 10K, maybe I'll put that on a on a switch, where on one hand I can have this set up for Fendry, and then the other hand I can have the, the 10K for the cold clipper. Um, I just am very curious to see if, you know, if I could go f and, and include a, a variety of different voicings in this amp. You know, so I can run into the Fender input, blackface Fender, keep the master down a little bit to mimic the attenuation you would get from all this stuff. Um, then if I want more of a British feel, I can go into the Cascade input. Or if I want more of a train wreck feel, go into the Fender input, but then maybe include a switch here for a cold clipper. And then pump the master up a little bit more. Um, so that is kind of the game plan as far as what I want to do. Um, I don't exactly know what to call this amp, and I don't know how it's going to work. But I think the general game plan I'm going to follow is to start with the Bandmaster. So that'd be really just this Fender input with these two, and then kind of skip over this part and go directly to the long tail pair. Um, but then, you know, you know, be ready to experiment with adding these, you know, V1B and V2B to give me the British voice, but also the train wreck voice. And so, um, yeah, that's going to be kind of the game plan, so to speak. Um, it's going to be kind of a blackface JCM wreck. Um, so, yeah, if you got any thoughts or comments, please leave them down below. And uh, stay tuned for more videos like this to see how the build goes. Thanks. Bye.